Perfect, thank you. So we're recording this, just to have everyone be aware of this. Um, so the, the main outcome from the session, as I, I see it, is a validation for the work that we are doing. There was a general consensus amongst everyone who was there that the format that we had agreed on make sense to them and that the way we present the metrics is logical and the structure in which it is organized is useful. Uh, so sorry, that, I started taking notes and um, it, York, sorry, and it started taking notes in the wrong area. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> oh yeah, you're, you're the anonymous chinchilla on my side. <laughs> yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> or whoever is typing. <laughs> yeah, I, I was typing, yep. Yeah. Another area that came up and we need to spend more time and work on is the ethics part. And Emma had started that by putting some documents in our repository, just saying, hey, we are aware of this, we need to work this out. But that also resonated with our participants. So that's why I'm not quite I'm, sure I got that last one. The ethics parts around the doing diversity and inclusion metrics, collecting data, asking for personal information, storing, managing data, oh, and reporting okay. it out so that we don't de-anonymize anyone. So those are all issues that were mentioned. Got it, okay. Did I miss anything, Don? Good. Nothing I can think of. Awesome. So I, I propose an agenda for today that we recap the tutorial, which we already did, and then talk about upcoming events just to have that on the agenda. Um, so what about Don's point with Emma? And I mean, I know this is the time that has been set, but could you put that on the agenda too? Yep. Yep. Mm, okay. Yeah, what we've done in what we've done in the past is try to cover things that maybe um Emma would be less involved in or um and save things that we think she would have want to be more involved in for the second half. Yeah, and that's not a great solution. No, it's not. No, I agree we need to find another time, but I'm saying we don't need to wait right now. We can continue the meeting, but let's just focus on maybe some things that, like upcoming events, we can talk about that. Yeah. Um, is it that she can join at the bottom of the, at the like at 930 Pacific? Is, is that, that yeah. the nine o'clock doesn't work for her? Okay. Yeah. All right. And Nicole, if I remember correctly, you only have the first half. Uh, that was actually on Wednesday, um, but if we make it on Mondays, I can pencil that time out, if, even if we start at 9.30. Okay. What about you, Daniel? Would moving the meeting half an hour later impact your ability to join? No, mine? No. What about it, other folks? Yeah, I was checking my calendar. Uh, well, I usually have Mondays free. It's only we 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 would be finishing at 
7.30 p.m. A bit late, but I can deal with this. Yeah, I think we should look at, let's look at some of the other days and see if we can um, not push it quite so late into the European evening. Um, yeah. Because that, that's, yeah, that's pretty late for, for Danielle and it does push it until 6.30 my time. So it's kind of, it does, it, it pushes it right into the, you know, well, it bumps up into dinner for, for me, not for Spain, I suppose, because you guys eat later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. So it's not ideal. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about that one, Emma. Let's talk about this one, Emma joins. Let's move on to one of the other yeah. agenda items, if that's mm. right. So we um, are talking about upcoming events. There is a session that um, where I think chaos might come up. Um, there's a session that Danielle and I are participating in at the OpenStack Summit in Berlin. Mm -hmm. um, and it's uh, focused on the importance of mentors and mentoring. One of the things we're going to be talking there about there is the data that we've done around uh, the, in the OpenStack community around mentoring. But I think that th there's a potential of, of our work through the chaos, this group coming up there. So, um, you know, we we may want to, Danielle, think about, um, you know, in introducing uh, that. Yeah. Um, so, um, so one of the things we were doing in the in the mentorship panel during the open source summit with Jeffro was to introduce uh, chaos as a community to the people there. So all of the people were aware of the work we were doing and how we are introducing the concept of mentorship in, in the community in one of the focus areas and, and so on. So um, at least we can do that for sure at the OpenStack Summit. Yeah, cool. That that would be one. So, so sorry, what what is it now that you want from us here? We we were just talking about um, upcoming events where we thought, or at least, gosh, my interpretation that we were um, talking about up upcoming events that could shine a light on the work that we're doing through the Chaos Project. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So was there something for the Open OpenStack Summit that you needed us prepare or information? I wasn't sure. Oh, no, no, no. So no. The, the, the point is that, the, so we, uh, Nicole and I, and well, other people from the OpenStack Foundation are having a, a panel on mentorship. So uh, one of the things we can do is at least we try, we, we can try to do the same as we did in, um, uh, during the open, during open source summit that you were there in the Georg and, and Don Foster. And basically I, I introduced the community, uh, the way we are working and what well, we can say that this is part of chaos and what. You know. Okay, perfect, thank you. Here I'll, yeah, I'll add a little bit of flavor here. Okay. Um, for the upcoming OpenStack, uh, I know you were, or someone was working on a report about mentorship in the community. And if I remember correctly, there was a, um, or we, we talked about having chaos involved in the analysis or report phase, or was there a survey or something along those lines? Um, so I think we are mixing two things here. One is the survey that the Benestack Foundation was running. Um, some of us has access under an NDA for data, so basically we can understand some things. And the other is the OpenStack gender report where we were uh, focusing on the last version on mentorship. And this version, it happens that it was put on hold till 
basically, I guess that Nicole and me, we meet in, at the open stack summit and then we push this again. We move this forward again. So I don't know if you are referring to anything else, Georg. Okay. So the survey was not for the mentorship report or the uh, general report. No, the the survey, um, and Daniel, keep me honest. Let me know if this is your understanding as well. But um, the survey is what uh, Amy Merritt, who is the lead of the diversity working group within the OpenStack community. Uh, she was running a survey. Um, it seemed to me to be more demographical around um, diversity uh, in, in that community. But um, Danielle, is that the same survey that you're thinking of? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you were not involved in this survey. Not me. No, I was not. Okay. There is then also um, research that, uh, that Danielle and I have been connect conducted in the OpenStack community, um, but it's actually, you know, had, had um, broader benefit. And that we've been conducting for over the last year and a half or so. Mm -hmm. We're due to publish the next report um, it, uh, by the end of this year. And so when we were talking earlier about what we might, and the last report, the last report that we published, um, we were trying to, let me back up, we were trying to publish these around so that they would coincide with OpenStack releases. OpenStack releases are planned, or were, in April and October, roughly. And so each April and October, we were publishing reports in, to coincide with these releases. We're due to publish, the last report focused on mentoring and mentorship, and some of the data we'll be talking about in this panel that we've listed, um, the, uh, we're due to publish the next report. And Danielle and I were talking about what should we focus on in that report? Because in all honesty, the data as we look at it um, in, uh, with regard to, to DNI in the OpenStack community has by and large remained the same over time. Mm -hmm. And so what we have been saying is, okay, can we choose to make these reports different? Can we choose specific areas of focus? And this, for this next one, we were thinking, well, what if we restructured it using the format and structure that we developed through the work group, through this work group? Does that make sense? Yeah, that would be very interesting. Yeah, so that so that's what we're that's what we're uh, looking at. The other thing, the other thing that we're looking at is, uh, and that we've been talking about, um, is, uh, and this gets more into the qualitative um, uh, that we've been talking about for for a while now, um, and. Uh, you know, through the research, we have been able to identify the top five and top, the top five and bottom five projects with the greatest and least amount of DNI, right? Le levels of DNI. And so we thought, wouldn't it be interesting? Could it give us some key learning if we studied those sub projects? more closely or those communities more closely but i'm not sure that we've really figured out how to do that yeah indeed here it would be great to have feedback from the ptls something that are the project team leaders in openstack uh, mm, so it's something we can try definitely nicole but probably this, this discussion to be out of this meeting right now but to discuss 
directly with the technical leaders. So we got some feedback and in terms of the data we are producing. And if we find some interest, then we can share this with, uh, with the community. Because we're trying to get to, you know, so these reports have focused on the, the what or the, the, the numbers. But what we're trying to get to is the why. So why, why are these top five projects, why has they been able to attract greater diversity within their communities? And likewise, right, equally important, these bottom five, why is that the case? So we've, we've been trying to figure out how to go about that. And we haven't figured, we, we, we'd love feedback on that because we, we're not quite sure how to tackle that. The feedback would be great. If you have any idea. Yeah, off the top of my head, I don't have an idea. But thank you for the update on the work that you're doing. The other thing um, that isn't really, as we talk about upcoming events, uh, we're starting to think about the diversity and inclusion content for, and I know this is a ways out, but for the Open Source Summits in 2019 um, and what themes we might want to, to bring out there. So um, if, we, we have some time to think about this, obviously, but if some things come to mind, I would um, love to be able to um, uh, collect the input from our team here and feed that back in um, for organization for the diversity track um, or diversity empowerment summits for those events. Okay. So what kind of feedback are you looking for on sessions or, or? And there's, um, yeah, um, what we could submit as a team, um, you know, what, what are some of the things we could talk about? Yeah, so session submission um, from this team, or just more generally, what are some of the things that we should be talking about through these through these vehicles through these um, events. So, um, as an example, the importance of advocates and allies has been a topic that we've carried through the Open Source Summit in North America in Vancouver and through um, uh, to to Edinburgh. Um, are there themes like that, or are there subjects like that within the diversity and inclusion umbrella that we should be uh, soliciting uh, from the larger community. So, so twofold. One, session submissions from our team, um, our group, um, and then uh, areas and topics that uh, we'd like to see discussed in these different forums. Could we have a, a theme on uh, measuring your diversity and inclusion or assessing mm -hmm. diversity and inclusion that we specifically ask for um, sessions that talk about the process and the metrics that everyone uses? That would of course assume that there are projects that do but that information would be directly related to the work that we do because we provide a tool set that could be used in this process 
but that's what we're working on. And so hearing from others can help us expand this tool set, complement it, and also over time we will see people actually start using our tools. Yeah. Just from my perspective or my opinion, yeah, I, I think that it would be good to keep that top of mind, um, you know, and, and continue to talk about that. And, you know, we will have um, new refined um, and, and made even more progress by then. So I, I think that would be something valuable. And I think it's something that, com that the community would be interested in as well. Yeah, so, so this is both an idea of what we can talk about, which is our approach, and also solicitation for talks from others. Yeah. Um, what about uh, ChaosCon? Do we want to submit something to ChaosCon in uh, Brussels? Yeah, I think it makes sense for us to do something around diversity and inclusion. We could either do, we should think about whether we want to do something more like a panel, like what we did at um, ChaosCon North America, because that was, that was loads of fun. Um, we could also do, you know, something more like the tutorial that we did at, um, or we could, we should probably, what we should do is we should submit both. We should submit a tutorial similar to what we did at the Open Source Summit and submit a panel. And then we can decide which one we want when we do the selection. Yeah, that's a good idea. I think those are the most valuable um, interactions during the conference. Yeah. Um, I, I had, so I had the following experience in at the Inner Source Commons. Let me know what you think. That maybe this might be interesting for a for a session at the ChaosCon. So um, we are basically uh, producing a uh, writing a manifesto, right? So there are some people involved in in the manifesto writing process, um, and then during the summit, uh, we were I don't remember about some sixty people around. Uh, we split the manifesto into five or six pieces, and then we put everything in several blackboards. And what we were asking the people was, hey, uh, this is, well, let's say that the author's definition of inner source. Um, please let us know what you think for each of the areas. And people were basically writing down their thoughts and missing items that they had, or the feeling about uh, well, that were missing from the manifesto, and they were uh, putting everything in the different blackboards depending on the on the split area they they decided to work on. So one of the things we can try, we may consider is, I mean, it, it was so successful that it's something we can we can I guess we can reproduce. And people felt that they were basically helping to advance in the manifesto thing. So what if? we try something similar, I don't know. So we have several focus areas, we have several questions and comments, we have even metrics. Um, I don't know, what do you think? Maybe it doesn't make sense. So, so make it a, a workshop or a, a session where we actively ask for them to participate and help advance our metrics. That... Yeah. So the, what, the the way I see this is, so we have uh, so we have seven focus areas. So we may have seven places where we can put some posits, um, and then we say so focus area governance, uh, and then we 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 stay there and we say governance is this this and this, and we are defining governance in this this and this way, and then we have these questions, and then we have these metrics, um, and then we give the people the specific. Uh, writing part of what we have uh, defined as governance. Um, so then people, we give people time to work on each of the areas or the focus area they want to work at. 
and and they they say well they they write down ideas like okay uh, focus area governance uh, I think you are missing this area or I think that the this part of the I don't know code of conduct should be in another focus area I don't know but then we leave people participating somehow it's really we are looking for active participation I don't know if it makes sense at this stage but um, maybe it makes something. sense it makes a lot of sense to me sorry this is Matt. Um, usually that type of, of interaction goes over really well. Did you also mention the potential ability to show panels from say Grimoire Lab for some of these things? I think sometimes helping orient people as to what you know they can see. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So it's something, um, um, I mean, probably potentially at any part of the chaos work done so far, we can do something similar, but it was okay. quite interesting. I know. Um, I think, so we've run these in the past to get feedback and they're usually pretty lively, you know, when we've run these types of workshops in the past. So anyway, I like the idea. In addition to a panel, I mean, not, not exclusionary of anything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, we can submit a couple of different ideas too, and then the selection committee can decide which ones make the most sense. Yep, agreed. I really like that because it gets folks involved in interacting and it also gets them, um, not only does it drive awareness of the work that we're doing, hmm. but it gives them a, a bit of, you know, skin in the game or, or buy-in, right? So that they're both aware and they also feel like they've helped shape it such that maybe they will use it in their own communities, right? And so maybe it's a way to drive adoption um, of this standard set of, of uh, metrics as well. What if, um, I'm sorry, Don, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, just to catch Emma up, we're talking about upcoming events and specifically we're talking about what we should submit to ChaosCon and the current thinking is that we should submit a panel and a couple and two different types of tutorials and then let the selection committee decide which one's best for um, for ChaosCon. Are you going to be at ChaosCon, Emma, for FOSDEM? You're muted. <laughs> at least you can hear us, that's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're behind all a bunch of windows. Sorry, I found you. <laughs> um, I hope so. Okay, good. I'm trying to, I guess I have to, to figure out going to FOSDEM. That way I can justify going for a one-day conference to Europe. Yeah. So also what we're doing for FOSDEM. So let's talk about that next. Um, well, can I, let me add one. Oh, go thing. ahead. Sorry, Matt. Yep. So what if, if um, what you're talking about, Daniel, but I mean, what if at the end of the session you actually asked people for a poll request? Uh, that's something we can do. Um, depending on the profile date, uh, my experience is that people may not feel comfortable uh, sending a pull request. Maybe even. an issue then? I'm just, I'm trying to think of ways to connect the people who are in the audience more directly with the project. I think one of the problems that comes mm. from running these workshops where you ask for feedback is you have to have somebody jot all of that feedback down and then feed it back into the work of the project. And so say, say for example, in the past we've collected a bunch of different metrics around say growth, maturity and decline. You get the idea. Georg is taking like copious notes and then it's hard to connect those copious notes back into the project. Um, it's, it's the voices of many and then having one person connect all of those back is a little tricky sometimes. But if the members themselves could create those connections, even if it's just an issue, perhaps there would be a greater sense of ownership to the project itself that they've actually put their, you know, they, they put, it, put a statement out there a little bit, just a thought. Just trying to connect people what with the, the project. Goal? What is the goal of them coming in late? The goal is that they understand something. I know, I know you're thinking about them doing something to demonstrate. 
Yeah. Something, what is the thing that you wanted to demonstrate? Well, this is, so Daniel had proposed a kind of a pain, a panel that would be yeah. talking about the um, focus areas with respect to DNI. Yeah. Yep, and then asking people to kind of displaying what is currently the uh, state of the art with respect to the DNI work group, and then mm -hmm. asking people to reflect on that current state of the art and provide um, either feedback on what's already there or provide new levels of depth that the committee hasn't thought about or the work group hasn't thought about. So just, I don't, this may, may not be helpful. Um, I was also talking to the 24 pull requests person. Off, um, I've been talking to them about non-technical code, like non-technical contributions and the idea of like checklists. And so maybe the, you proposing like a pull request and, but maybe there's like a list of the 10 things that you can do to contribute to this project. And that might be as simple as opening an issue or they might be fixing something. Yep. Or, and uh, like making it super low hanging fruit. So it's just, um, and that's one thing that I, I'm doing with uh, applicants for the Moss project. I just put a, a checklist in there as well. This is very drafty, but you get the idea of like how I'm thinking of it. That's a really good idea. Because people, it's harder, I think that it's harder for people to figure out what they should do or can do. And it's easier to just take some direction and thinking about it as low hanging fruit helps. Yeah, cool. uh, one of the things that's not quite clear to me right now is what the format is. Is this something where everyone sits at their table, opens their laptop, and then works digitally? Or is this something where we use the physical space and have in different corners of the room different focus areas from our metrics, and they have to walk there and leave post-it notes on the wall or what's the format that the engagement happens in? So the, the, the way at the inner source commons was that well we didn't care about ownership in that case so it's a bit different if we want to um, foster ownership in, in this case. So uh, we were using physically the, the place and we were writing down some posits and putting the posits in the several areas we were uh, we wanted to participate or, or, or had some comments about that, but that was all. But it's true that in that case, we didn't want to foster ownership, so different. So I'm going to propose, since we've spent a lot of time talking about this one thing, <laughs> let's, let's give ourselves three, three actions. Um, one is maybe for Daniel to write up this proposal in just a okay. Google Doc, and we can review it. Mm -hmm. um, we should maybe write up the tutorial in the second doc, um, kind of a redux of the one that we did at Open Source Summit in Edinburgh. And then the third one is to put together a proposal for a diversity and inclusion panel. For all, all three of those for ChaosCon. And if we can um, just split that up into to actions, um, that, would be, that would be good. Does anybody? in particular want to do the um, panel or the tutorial. I'm happy to do one of one of the two. I don't really care which one. Is the panel the more uh, interactive one, like potentially sticky notes? Because if that, like. Uh, no, I, I think they were kind of separate. So I think the panel was sort of like what we did at ChaosCon North America. Mm -hmm. Oh, right, the tutorial. No, the North America. And then the tutorials like what we did at the Open Source Summit in Edinburgh. I can and, repurpose and, the tutorial description that we have for. Yeah, it would be good to, to I, I can, I'd like to help think about the tutorial, like moving that from just discussion to like that sort of sticky note design thinking. Yeah, I've done a bit of that, so I'd be happy to contribute to that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we have two options. Um, and I'm I'm happy to do the proposal for a panel. The idea is one of us kicks off the document, and we can create uh, issues or something, and um, get feedback from people. Yep, good idea. Um, so as long as one of us just sort of takes the lead to create it, we can all contribute to it. So I think we'll all be involved in all of them. 
Um, and then the other piece, getting back to Emma's point about FOSDEM, so there's a community dev room on Sunday, mm -hmm. and the submission deadline is the 23rd of November. And the sessions run for 30 or 45 minutes, including Q&A. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it would probably be good to do something around diversity and inclusion there. Anybody have any thoughts on what would what would work best? Would, would we want to try to do a panel or would we want to try to do something else? Tutori a tutorial is not going to work at FOSDEM. It kind of has to be either a presentation or a panel. Presentation or a panel. Yeah. Is there any way, because the thing that I'm thinking the opportunity of being at FOSDEM is that we can learn a lot about what people are already doing or the struggles they're having or what most resonates with the things that they need. Is there any sort of format that allows us to it, like, like collaborative, more collaboratively, I guess, like we're talking about the tutorial or not, it has to be mostly. You, you've been to FOSDEM before, right, Emma? I have, for some reason, I have never been to FOSDEM. Okay. Yeah. FOSDEM is sort of chaos um, in that the, the rooms are really tiny and packed absolutely completely full of people. Yeah. And not everyone that you want to come to your session is going to be able to actually physically get in the room. A lot of people get turned away. Um, so I've just found that it's not a great forum for, for getting right. feedback, um, that it tends to be better for, because they also record the sessions. So they actually don't want a lot of um, audience participation without the microphone. It's complicated. I think a, a talk then mm, yeah. would be good. And who who else is going to be at FOSDEM? Georg, are you you're going to be there, right? No, I'm planning to travel again after my dissertation, which is okay. after FOSDEM. <laughs> I I know the feeling. <laughs> I put myself on a travel ban for the three months before mine, too. <laughs> um, okay. So it looks like, and, and Nicole, are you, I assume you're not going because of Intel travel difficulty. Yeah. Okay. Right. <laughs> right. Yes. Well said. Well said. We'll just, we'll just leave it at that. Um, so it looks like Emma, myself, uh, Daniel will be there. So we could do some joint presentation. We could do, somebody could do an individual presentation. I don't, I don't have a strong preference. I might submit something else to that dev room. I haven't really, I haven't really decided. I'm trying to think of a good idea for it outside of the diversity and inclusion space. Yeah. I'd be, I wouldn't mind having, like, working on something with you, Don, if you're up for it. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. Um, or even we, like, it could be as presenting something together, or we can work on two talks, which go deep dive into one or more areas. Yeah. But I think it would be helpful for me from a time perspective as well. But. Okay. Yeah, I'd be happy to, to do something jointly. Um, do we want to just take that action item to go off and, and think about that and maybe yeah, talk sure. more about it later? Okay, it's noted. Thank you very much. Then, Emma, we were thinking about changing the time of our meetings to be more inclusive and allow you to be there the whole time because we are always putting things in the beginning of the Sorry. Uh, session and then we catch you up and we we think it's valuable to just have you there for the full session well if this works for most people though i didn't i didn't want to like rock the boat because I, I just can't remove my team meeting on monday mornings unfortunately yeah but i think it's important given that you're one of the two maintainers basically for right for the the working group that that you'd be here for now i can go backwards and I'd go backwards. I can go earlier <laughs> in time. Like I like it doesn't have to be later. My my team meeting is from eight 
thirty till nine thirty my time, right? And this meeting starts at nine, so um, I could do seven thirty to eight thirty, or, or like, anyways. I, I know you all have different time zones, so this isn't helpful. But I could go, you know, I can do early morning meetings. It's not a problem for me. Yeah. What about you, Nicole? Could you do a seven thirty to eight thirty meeting? And well. Um... Well, it would be a, a little difficult only because I'm trying to get Duncan to school. Yeah. Um, so that would be, could we look at maybe a different day or yeah. would or are folks open to that? Yep. Yeah, sure. Yeah. What's, have, what's the earliest you can, you can meet that wouldn't interfere with your um, getting Duncan ready? Um, uh, 8.30. Okay. So I have no, like, this one meeting that I have Monday mornings is the only other one like it is at 7 a.m. on Wednesdays. All else I can move around. So if that helps. What, have, what about Thursdays? Thursdays. Um, at which time? I'm wide. I I could do any any time. I can do eight to nine on Thursdays. Sorry, this is time zone talk is hard on. That's right. I have Pacific time zone as one of my time zones on my Google Calendar. Okay. Because there are so many people. <laughs> I could have you do... a meeting oh, on Thursdays. I have a meeting on my calendar from 8.30 to 9.30 Pacific time. Okay, so that's not going to work. Okay. Yeah, so this works for everyone. That's the hard part. Yeah. I could, I mean, I can generally do Wednesdays. Um, Wednesdays are generally fine for me, with the exception of uh, next week, but that's a one-off because I'm at a conference. So and Wednesdays, we, I could be available really kind of any time before about 10 or 10.30 Pacific time because that then bumps into too late into my evening. I have a 7 to 8, like, regular meeting Wednesday mornings, but after yeah. that, I, I can schedule anything. What about 9 to 10 on Wednesday? Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, Wednesday <laughs> are the horrible, horrible days for, for yeah. me, but... Um, you know, I'm just thinking, well, okay, so, so, Emma, when did you say you can make it on Mondays? I, basically, I have this 8.30 to 9.30 meeting every Monday, and before it is open and after it is open. I mean, it fills up, but those that's the only, like, hard hour that I have on Mondays. Okay, okay. Why don't we just do... Did every did, did everybody else make it from seven thirty to eight thirty? Yeah. Uh, okay. yeah, I can. Yes. Okay. So there will be weeks where I'm not going to be able to do this, but I'm gonna I'm gonna ask my fearless partner to to, to do Duncan duty on on Sunday morning. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, see. Well, we'll see if that works. <laughs> uh, if he says no, we know him, so we'll come after him. And my children, <laughs> my children are often getting ready during this hour, so there's often like fighting and me muting, and you'll see my mouth yelling, but I'm not talking to you. So I <laughs> hope know that you like are in a safe space for crazy mornings. Oh, cool. Okay. Okay. I cool. like that Why idea. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> seven thirty to eight thirty on Monday. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Thanks for making that work, everyone. Yeah, yeah thank you. Cool. Yeah. And didn't somebody, uh, Georg, were you the one that sent out a a meeting request for this? Yes, and I'm updating it right now. Sweet. Perfect. By the way, did I send the reminder to the right list? On, on when was it Friday afternoon? Um, Did anybody receive it? Let me check. Oh, 
I did. I saw, I got it. Sorry. Oh, woohoo! Okay. <laughs> cool. But I'm not. I don't remember which list it went to. Oops, I'm the wrong Me neither. Place. But thank you. <laughs> okay. Because you said you sent it last two. week, I think. Yeah, I sent yeah. it on Friday afternoon for today's meeting, um, and it went to uh, yeah, 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 um, chaos at list dot linuxfoundation.org. Yeah, I see. I see the email. I have this. Okay. Okay. I think that's probably good. It goes to the main list and not just our list. That way it keeps any new people that join the main chaos list in the loop that we exist. I don't know if you agree. No, but this, this is the main list, right? This yeah, is chaos. I know. I'm just saying that that's good. Oh, so that, so okay. Right. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Hey, Garrick, can you resend that um, meeting notice to me, but using my Gmail address? Because I don't have a calendar associated with the one you sent it to, and it complains. Uh, yes, I will send you one. Okay, that'd be cool. If you could send it to Pivotal, too, that'd be great, since you have all of my email addresses. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Sorry, I'm, I'm in... Yep email address hell right now. Um, okay, you should have received the email. I hope. Okay, thank you. So after solving this very difficult and unsolvable problem, we can move on. <laughs> how how are we going to continue working on the metrics? Oh yeah, that's a good question. I was I was thinking that too because I I went through this weekend and fixed a bunch of links and created some template files for pages that we didn't have template files created yet. But I wasn't sure if we really wanted to work in the, did we want to work as pull requests in the repo or did we want to start them as docs the way we did before with issues? Does anybody, I, I don't really care. I'm curious what other docs people. docs were the easiest first way because if we ever want to collaborate just quickly, it's harder, I think. And then once we kind of feel like it's, in, then I like, I like the process where <clears throat> there's a document associated with an issue that was reviewed and then it became marked out. Okay. I don't know if that's just what I think. But what do others think? I will do whatever, whatever folks choose. So, yeah, I'm fine with that. I mean, I think the Google doc does make it a little bit easier to, to comment on things and, and make changes. So, so if, if I wanted to tackle another one of those areas, I should just create issues and link those to Google Docs and, yeah. and work in a Google Doc. Yeah. Okay. The other thing um, I think that we need to do, and I don't know when we prioritize it, is really kind of have a strategy for citation and research that's backing up that document. Um, and I know that Anita had originally, I think maybe was going to propose that we haven't seen her in a while, but what is it, you know, when we start talking about these metrics at a conference, we start saying, you know, someone might say, where did you get that from? We should be able to answer in some way that sounds <laughs> like we know, and we do know, but you know what I mean? Like have yeah. it point to, and I think that's a, like, it's not just the effort of doing it, but the, that we, understand and maybe there's already a way that we can leverage from the rest of the chaos project this might be separate than what you're saying though Don. sorry it just occurred yeah. to me that I've, I've been thinking about where that fits and i don't know yet yeah i find that i find that difficult that's why the pages that i did had nothing in the resources section for example <laughs> because it all came out of like i did the events section and it all came out of my brain based on stuff i've done at events that's worked yeah. or not worked hmm. um so I, I have a hard time with the citations, yeah, says the recent PhD student. <laughs> but even like the fact that that came from your experiences, is there not a way that we can capture that? Because that's a valid, for me, that's a valid, Ooh. you're a valid source having. Yeah. 
So we can, again, we can just make this a think about it thing. Yeah. And no, we could think about it because I could, I could cite some of the, like, I don't know, like events that I worked on that, that did some of the stuff. Like a lot of this came from, from DevOps Days London, which we just, just did this year. And, you know, we had a lot of, a lot of good diversity efforts around diversity tickets and. Yeah, exactly. Totally. Maybe yeah. that's, you reference those events. Yeah, and now that I think about it, there's some other stuff we did that I should work into some of those metrics documents, like things like um, providing uh, live captioning, sign language, um, some of the things to help people um, with different abilities uh, participate. Yeah, let me think about that a little more. Mm -hmm. I like the idea of including examples where it was used successfully yeah. as a reference. Yeah. I'm actually trying to, I have a document that I need to, for the code of conduct enforcement, I'm typing away, trying to get that pull request in for the end of the call. I'm also going to start on leadership stuff soon. Um, just so you know, I'm pretty swamped right now, but I'm, I'm still slowly plucking away at it. Yeah. I'm swamped. That's not unique to me. So what I can do as an action item for me is create those issues for all the missing pages and set up the Google Docs that way they are ready for you. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, and I'll do that. Okay. And I still have my uh, AR or action item of um, the README file too. Yep. Do you want me to put this in here? Yeah, the README um, and Twitter and all of that I'm still working on. From a Twitter perspective, I was more focused on um, OSS Summit in Edinburgh and making sure that all of all of the great work you guys were doing there was um, promoted so, through Twitter. You're so awesome. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Nicole. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I I want to make sure that um, all of your great work is uh, you know um, showcased. So now that now that we're um, done with that. Um, I'll set my sights on Chaos Cup. Okay. Um, looking at our agenda that we had set at the beginning, I think we got through all of it. So thank you, everyone. Any last thoughts? Anything we didn't talk about? I just. I had I added a link there for a slide that I updated from our talk in Edinburgh about how I talk about the organization process and design of the working group. Um, and I just wanted to make sure that it resonated. I'm trying to find you again. Where is my screen? I find Zoom really weird. It just comes and goes, and I can't. I don't always know where it goes. <laughs> So um, anyways, there's a slide link there and it shows, um, basically I added three bars underneath the, the block. So there's the working group, there's the focus area, there's the focus area goals, the methods, tools, and tactics. And then um, I, I'm starting to talk about it like research, citation, ethics, consent, and privacy, and demographic data are all like the, the foundational pieces of that work. So because I found that people are like, so where's the data and how are you? So I'm trying to to talk about this being the like a part of everything, like research and citation are part of everything, ethics, consent, privacy are part of everything, how we apply demographic data and are a part of everything. So if that graphic helps, great. If it could be better, let me know because I'm presenting about, work inside yes. Mozilla soon. Yeah, you said it expands all of it. What about rotating it 90 degrees and making it physically span or visually spanning the space of the other? 
Blocks. So we've been through the fact that Emma does not have design skills before. And I tried to do that and the, the letters were all weird and ugly. So I, I agree that that might be better, but I was not able to pull it off. Okay. Yeah, if you have suggestions for ways to do that, or you can show me an example of how the writing could be, I, I don't know. Yep, gotcha. <laughs> but great feedback, thank you. Sorry, which, which image are we looking at? I got lost there. Slide five. Mm -hmm. What? So there, there's a link in the agenda. Oh, okay. That says, um, Emma updated how she talks about chaos organization and process design. And because I'm having, I'm doing, I have to do a presentation later this month for Inside Mozilla to sort of talk about this work and like, you know, validate our, you know, I, I don't think it's going to be hard, but it's really, people have a hard time grasping what we're doing and there's so many moving pieces. And this was from the slide deck in Edinburgh, but the, the pieces that I didn't have before were those three horizontal blocks before. And I'm trying to figure out, and Georg was just saying that they should be flipped to the side, but then I was like, well, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> and hopefully this helps us all start, like, so please hack away or make, uh, suggestions for what will make you it, help you talk about the value in the work you're doing mm -hmm. inside your organizations. But I think that's probably a goal for all of us, right? What are you doing over there? Oh, well, you know, we're making standards for metrics for diversity. Like, but mm -hmm. what does that mean in a nutshell? So that's what I'm trying to accomplish here. This is really cool. Okay. Yeah, the chaos logo is also stretched a bit. I know. <laughs> okay. Okay. No, no worries. Sorry. I'm being nitpicky. Yeah, I'll actually just delete that for now. <laughs> it's probably a distraction. <laughs> but anyways, okay, so just know that feedback there is welcome and hopefully it becomes a tool for you as well to talk about. Maybe it can eventually be in the readme or something once I get it right. That's all I had. That was a lot. Holy smokes. This whole meeting, there's a lot of stuff in there. Okay. Well, okay. okay. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, thank everybody. You. Have a great week. You too. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.